All right, Storm Chasers, welcome back to the show. We got to get into Suge Knight. <clears throat> All right. Suge Knight was a menace when he was out of prison. He's a menace now that he's in prison. And Suge Knight apparently has his podcast where he is spilling tea, 90s tea, 80s tea, through 2000s tea. If it's one thing that a Negro is going to do, he's going to gossip. All right. So everybody's being aired out. All right. So let's get let's 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 get into the tea. All right. So we're gonna go right over to the neighborhood talk and we're gonna play this clip that pretty much went viral this morning. I mean, everybody was sending this to me like Storm, you gotta talk about it. You gotta talk about it, you gotta talk about it, you gotta talk about it. Suge Knight says left eye slept with Chili's baby daddy, so that's Dallas Austin, and told Chili. You got herpes, so I made him wear a rubber. All right? We going to play the clip, and then we going to play some other clip. Let's get to it. I remember them being jealous of her. I remember Chili mad because Lisa slept with Dad exhausted and they in the group together. But Lisa re responded with us, oh, we, but you know, you got her piece, so I made sure you put on rubber, so we all good. Woo! But nevertheless, she did some of the most incredible music that you can imagine. The other two members of the crew. I remember them being jealous of her. I remember Chili mad because Lisa slept with Dad exhausted and they in the group together. But Lisa re responded with us, ah, we f but you know. Okay. So just in case y'all can't hear it or can't see it, because they, they was bleeping the curse words. I hate on Instagram that we got to bleep the, <clears throat> I hate on Instagram that we got to bleep the cuss words because hell, we grown. All right? So Lisa told Chili when she figured out that Chili was mad at her, she said, girl, all shit, we fucked, saying that she had sexual intercourse with Dallas Austin, all right? Chili's baby daddy, remember? Chili aborted her first baby, the, the first baby she got pregnant with with Dallas, and then she turned around and she had the second one that she got pregnant with. So just keep all that in mind. She said, girl, all shit, we fucked, but you got herpes, so I made him wear a rubber. Now, what years did Chili and Dallas Austin date? This is all allegedly, 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 okay? They say Chili and music producer Austin began dating in the early 90s. And in 1997, they welcomed their son, Tron Austin. That's an interesting name, Tron. Okay, I always thought that was short for something, but okay. Um, oh, and oh, and his real last name is Austin. Interesting. Okay, okay. The couple split a few years later, around 2001, when the TLC singer began seeing Usher. Okay. Listen, so if it's true that Chili had herpes, then that means she either was, when did she meet Usher? That means she would have gotten it allegedly from Dallas or from somebody else. See, we always assumed that Usher gave it to her. And this is all in allegedly, I don't know anybody's health, I don't know anybody's status, and at the end of the day, half the population got it. So we we not finna judge Chili, but I'm I'm just saying. If I if I'm going to be very honest with y'all, the way they get around in the industry, they don't know who gave the shit to who. Now that's the truth. We always assumed Usher gave it to her, and then that's why they broke up. But then Chili said, "Now nah, we broke up because he cheated, and Usher was a playboy, and Usher." Had been getting around since he was a little kid. 
because Didi made sure of that. Now, the truth could very well be if Chili really has it, Chili could have already had that shit when she got with Usher. Okay? And due to Chili being mad that Usher cheated on her, she just let the world believe. You know, you know how like you don't confirm some shit, but you just let the world believe. And then Usher's not gonna confirm anything. And then we know what came out about Usher later on and all those lawsuits that he had to settle. But the thing about Herbie's, and I keep telling y'all this, because this shit is so contagious, and because so many people got it and don't know it, they really don't, they really don't be knowing where they get where they get this shit, especially in the industry. They get ran through, they get R-worded, they get drugged and R-worded. Um, a lot of times when they have to sleep with this person, to sleep with that person, to sleep with this person, to sleep with that person. Uh, from the time that they're teenagers and children in the industry, no protection is being used. So a lot of them be having this shit from the gate when they come in this shit. If you come in the industry and you 14, now when did, when did Usher come in the industry? He was a little kid. Let's just put it to you this way. If Usher was living with Diddy, what you think was going on while he was there? If y'all know that they pretty much make these people do the most salacious, nasty, dirty, gutter shit to get their records played, records heard, to seal deals. They, I, I say all that to say they could have been had this shit. Now, I'm finna look up when did Chili start dating Usher. Okay, so it says 2001 to 2004 uh usher was in his early 20s and chili was in her early 30s wow usher told the outlet he really did love that girl usher said of his early persona in the days of my way that he was always charming the older ladies okay well we know he's always loved him an older woman we know that yes they also get the shit from the yes the rituals they be part i'm telling you this shit's nasty but i just say this to say I guess we can clear Usher's name because allegedly if she has it, if she had, it, if it's true, she got that shit from, she had that shit before she met Usher. Quiet as it's kept, they both could have had the shit and didn't even know it. <laughs> well, she would have known it, but then, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Until you, okay. Uh -uh. I don't want to get too much into dirty talk. Did Diddy pound Usher cheat? What you think? Come on now. I wonder if look. I don't know what look him has. I'm just telling you if the majority of the industry has this, and we know how they get down and get around, and at these parties, these rituals, um, and all the assaults that happen in the industry, ain't no protection being used. A good example, Lady Gaga. Remember what Lady Gaga said when she first came in the industry? Those producers. Locked her in that uh recording studio and said, If you don't have sex with us, we finna burn up all your music. And so she did it. And after they got through, they uh they took her from the studio, they threw they dropped the ass off on the corner by her house, and she was pregnant and had to get an abortion. Find out she was pregnant later, had to get an abortion. Ain't nobody using no protection when they assaulting you. Just saying. I'm just saying. All right, so anyway, so with that being said, right, let me stop. Well, I want to go back. Let's look at some of the comments, and then I'm going to ask y'all what y'all think. Let's see. Look at some of the comments. So shout out to Breakbeat Media because that's uh where Sugar and I got a pat where he got a podcast through. Uh, Let's see. Uh, cute. Shout out to Cutie TV. She said, I don't believe anything on the internet, especially from no should why back night. Okay. It don't make sense. You can still get the hurt with the rubber. It's a good point. Envy said he can spill all this tea, but still can't tell us who killed Tupac. Go to hell, sir. <laughs> uh, Maya said, wait, so did Chili give Usher the burn? Mm. But left eye had herpes, Dr. Sabi said. So did he say that, though? Did he say that? I don't know. I don't know. 
Okay. All right. Crystal Cove said, Crystal Cove said Sugar's getting his oracle on like we're back in Greek mythology. You know what? Listen, just because he says it don't mean the shit's true. Suge ain't got nothing to lose. Suge theoretically could just be willing to say anything to go viral. All right. Oh, Jaguar said he's telling the truth and the real. Oh, oh. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So, so I said, well, damn, I do remember that Lisa left. I went to um the Dr. Sabi Village, right? So, what I first want to do is play this clip from Autopsy. Yeah, do y'all watch this show? Autopsy is on this channel called Reels. This shit be good. It be replays, but it be good. So, anyway. I'm going to play this, and then we're going to play some more clips. Autopsy examines the fatal car crash that killed R&B star Lisa Left Eye Lopez. I'm going to get to the truth about what really led to this tragic accident. The show says Lisa was in Honduras to visit a man called Dr. Sadie, who claimed to be able to cure any disease. I've been looking into who this Dr. Sabi really was. I found out that he had no medical training at all, yet he claimed he could cure all disease, including AIDS, using traditional African medicine. There is no scientific evidence to back up any of his claims. But Dr. Hunter says Lisa believed in him enough to make several trips to his compound. Clearly, Lisa felt she was benefiting from her many visits, but... She made many visits to the compound. Hold up. She made many visits to the compound. Now, if y'all remember when Dr. Sabi's nephew, and yes, this is nephew by marriage, I know a lot of y'all still gonna be slow and still go, whatever. He even said, he was like, look, you know, yes, we can get rid of herpes, he said, but it's very difficult. It takes a lot. Out of What's his name? Uh, Doshinko, out of Doshinko's mouth, it's easier for them to cure HIV than herpes. Let's, okay. So let's let's go back. I need to find out what made Lisa visit in the first place. The show's experts say she had a drinking problem. She became a different person when she drank, and she just got herself in a lot of trouble. It appears that as TLC became more successful, Lisa's relationship with alcohol became more volatile. Now, if you guys remember, Lisa grew up in a toxic, abusive environment. Uh, oh, that's an old picture of them. They look real young on that picture there. That must have been when they like first started. They look young as they were all beautiful. It's such a tragic story. Anyway, she grew up. If I remember correctly, her father was abusive, had an anger problem, had a temper. Uh, and I think her father was an alcoholic. Right. So it's not hard to believe that she would have grown up to be an alcoholic as well. But do y'all believe that's the only thing she went to Dr. Sabi's village for is a detox? I'm just saying. Do y'all think that's the only thing she went to Dr. Sabi's village for? Because I feel like she could have went to rehab in the States. She went on a whole retreat and she went several times. Okay, now moving on from that. Fair use, fair use, fair use, nigga, fair use. How did Lisa Left Eye Lopez discover Dr. Sabi? You know, I just could not believe that there was not a cure for, I don't care what disease, especially AIDS. Could not believe it. And about a week later, I was in the studio talking to a producer friend of mine, Michael Anthony, and he just decided to tell me about a man that he knew who had the cure. And that man was Dr. Sabi. A cure to what? And this is not us down in Lisa for the, this is not us, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. You notice when she, 
when she started, she said, I couldn't believe that there is no cure for, well, for anything, especially AIDS. No, I think, I think it was the herb. Or she could have had the herb and HIV. She could have had both. Could have had a, a, a real life special. Thank you. You're only going to go to Honduras for hip cancer or thank you. Because she said she got a phone call and this producer said, I know somebody that got a cure. Cure for what? That means she had been talking. That means she had been asking around. It was something she was dealing with or somebody that she knew. But if she, I'm, come on now. Fair use, fair use. Oh, before, I want to play this first. Now, Lisa very well. Mm, let me stop. Let me not say that because I don't want to accuse nobody or nothing. Um, when Lisa was with Andre, what's the name? Andre Reeson, Rison. He was a womanizer. They had some abuse. And... It was, it's very clear that he was cheating on her, which is why she burnt the house down. Now, just listen to this. Let me tell y'all something. He had been staying out late. I decided, all right, I'm going to flip the script. I'm coming home late with some girls with a dress on. Like, I just had the time of my life. It's the sun, me and the sun racing home right now. I got home, it was 5 o'clock in the morning. Andre's car still not in the driveway. So my plan definitely didn't work. He drove up five minutes after we drove up. Five minutes. And Andre's headlights were shining on me. And I was looking back at him like, yeah, motherfucker. And he was looking at me like, what the fuck do you have on me? He gets out the car, and as soon as he walked up to me, I don't know what he said, but he got slapped for it. Damn. He went in the house. I went in the house behind him. So it was just all building up, building up, building up. So now it's all coming out. It's all coming out. Everything that I just kept inside, all my frustrations, I was just enraged. I was about to snap. I was hurt. Next thing you know, he pulled me in the bedroom, and we were fighting. And the whole time, I'm screaming, and he grabbed me, throwing me back on the bed, pinning me down. Imagine that though. Let's just really talk about black relationship dynamics. And I'm only saying black because I'm black. Don't y'all notice? And this is even with the women in my family too. Who fight niggas? Head up. I've seen this shit. Ain't it something how we just casually describe abuse? Andre was cheating on her. He was the one being a womanizer. Yet he going to pin her down to the bed. He going to get an attitude because she ain't just laying down taking the shit and she ain't being some uh, doormat. She ain't over there acting like uh, Tisha over there with Marcel. So I call you on your shit and I got to get my ass beat because I call you on your shit. Like, this shit is wild. You mad that I'm calling you out for you cheating on me. This is... The... Okay. Uh, you know, how could you... And ripping my clothes, and he's just going crazy. Yeah, like... And then when I would get up on my feet... And then I would start just beating on him and stuff. You know, he would ball up and he would just let me take my frustrations out. And I was blasted. I was wasted. I was blacking in and out the whole time. And I woke up. And that's what now she did say she was wasted. To be fair. She did say she was wasted. She did say that she was wasted. So she was in and out. And she did say he just he took that shit. This is some toxic shit. 
Go watch a uh, VH1 special. Okay, okay. I'll look for it. Look for it. When I walked in the bathroom and looked in the damn mirror, and when I seen my face, I was like, I'm about to kill him. I had a big bruise right here that went from the outside of my lip, flipped the lip under to the inside. <laughs> my, I didn't even almost didn't even recognize myself. I was like, no, no. And then you wake up to fight. No, this is not happening. I'm going to kill him. I was still enraged. I was still hurt. And that's when I went in the closet and I seen all of these tennis shoes stacked up, stacked up, stacked up, stacked up. So I was like, wait a minute. All right. One of these better be for me. I didn't. So long story short, she burned down the house. Long story short, she burned down the house. But I'm just, listen. Y'all believe what y'all want? Y'all saying go to the VH1 documentary? Okay, wait a minute. Dr. Sabi, VH1 documentary. I think we just played that. Um... The untold case. Mm, I don't know. Y'all believe what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all believe what you want. But you do, but listen. Let me ask y'all this, though, for real, for real. This was so long ago. Does it even really matter? Like, are you going to look at Lisa different? Are you going to look at Chili different? Are you going to? I'm just being honest. Like, does it really matter? Nah, that was them at the at the compound. At the village, like I just don't think it matters. Oh, the documentary was on MTV. Um, I might not be able to find it. I was like, MTV, Ooh, excuse me, good lord, yeah, I'm not finding it on YouTube. Um, and I'm looking. Mm. Let's see. I'm looking. I'm looking. I mean, but listen, I think if we just being real, it said Lisa, Lisa left. I was on the hunt for a cure. If we being real, come on now. We know what it is. We know what it is. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last days of left out. Okay. Hold up, hold up. Uh, all right. <laughs> worked and came home and made sure that we ate we and he has a very simple philosophy guess what you're not just a physical being okay you are an entity with an energy source you know that is responsible for okay wait 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 wait, wait. so let's i can only play it in pieces because yeah Lisa exposes Egypt to the practices of Dr. Sibi, the natural healing guru who had introduced her to Honduras in 1997. Today, we're going to take time out to clarify 
much of the misconceptions and misunderstanding about healing and nutrition. All right, it says over several years, over the course of five years, Lisa made several trips to his village in the hunt in the Honduran jungle. I heard Honduras was hella dangerous too. This man has shared a lot with me. We looked at him as if he was a gift, you know, to come here to this place and to have someone like him around who could help us find us. And he has a very simple philosophy. Guess what? You're not just a physical being, okay? You are an entity with an energy source, you know, that is responsible for, you know, your physical well-being. I mean, I don't care what anybody says about it. You know, he really opened my eyes. He's an immigrant from Honduras who never went to school, college, or medical school. But the man known as Dr. Sabi claims to have found the cure for several life-threatening diseases, including AIDS. Dr. Sabi believes what ails you can be cured with natural alkaline herbs and a vegetarian diet solely made up of what he calls electric foods, mushrooms, greens, and rye bread without starch. Now, let me say this. The crazy thing is, this shake right here is from a company called Perium. Guess what? They talking all about alkaline this and alkaline that. Listen, people talked about them back in the day, but uh, yeah, I'm going to just say, yeah. I don't care what the media puts out and what people read. I believe in him. We okay. have plums, apples, kiwi, grapes, watermelon, nectarine. The most important thing in life is to have a very good diet, get rid of the, the meat, get rid of the sugar, and please get rid of the sodas. I've been cleansing. Look how good this shit look. Like, I can tell I've been drinking my shakes, bitch. I got my, basically this alkaline powder. I got my powder of fucking watermelon and is that mango? I think I got mango in here too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I got mango. Well, yeah. That 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 plate look good. Is that just me? That plate looks delicious. On and off for three years now. See all of these bags sitting on the floor? Mm -hmm. Now, these are herbs, everybody. So, <laughs> I can't wait till we start cleansing. We're going to start cleansing tomorrow. Y'all ready to take your herbs? No, and the herbs do not taste good. Look, look, look. Look at old girl face. Look at old girl face. Look, 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 look. Wait a minute. So, <laughs> I can't wait till we start cleansing. We're going to start cleansing tomorrow. Y'all ready to take your <laughs> She's dead. Damn. You know, this is mental. But it makes you mentally stronger. You know what I mean? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's like solo water. You can do it. It's all in your head. 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 That's how you have to do it. You just got to begin it over with. Wait, wait, wait. I want y'all to see old girl fade. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. <laughs> That's how you yeah, have to do it. <laughs> Look how she looks directly in the camera. <laughs> she like, shit. She put that shit to her mouth. She said, oh, my God. <laughs> you can't even really allow yourself to taste it. You just got to swallow it. You got to swallow. Have you ever been swallowed? Have you ever been swallowed? Swallowed. Wow, she said, Oh, shit. looking like Joan from Girlfriends. Oh, you just gotta swallow it, swallow it, swallow it up. <laughs> I play too much. You just gotta begin it over with. <laughs> Oh, 
Now, old girl started hacking. It's gonna t- it's gonna bring all that shit up. But this is what th- you know. Listen, I love to look at old videos because I feel like. Now, stay with me when I say this. Number one, they both slim as hell. Like, you don't really find girls this slim no more. No shade. I don't know what they put in our foods, but we is all we struggling in 2024. I feel like we weren't looking like this in the 90s. These women are gorgeous. Look at these beautiful black people. I don't see black people that look like this no more. Is it just me? Listen, stop the bullshit. Is it just me? You don't see black folks look like this no more. I mean, like, even in the face, like, something's going on. And you know what? Back then, they were probably still on a fucking diet, but they look good. Latera said, I still look like that. I don't hold, I'm talking about these new girls, you know, the, these new, you probably 35 plus. The 35 plus look better than the ones in the early 20s. I see them all, man. Where you be at? Before BBLs, damn. We really look, shh. Anyway. I ain't trying to get on no black queen talk. I ain't Dr. Umar, but I'm just saying. It was all going up. Anyway, I say all that to say. Natural slim bodies, they look great. That's what I'm saying. I see less handsome. And let it's it's gotta be the it's gotta it's gotta be we ain't, we wasn't sitting at home all day. That's a good point too. That's that's what I'm telling you. See, they keep telling us, oh, you gotta work out, you gotta work out. That's true too. That that's true because we most of us do live sedentary lifestyles, but yeah. It's, I'm telling you, it's the food. They are putting death in the food. I'm about to leave the country. It's been nice. It's been cool. I'm about to leave the country. Shout out to Lil Jones. Lil Jones, get your ass. Well, I'm, I'm not going to send the link right now, but uh, um, I don't know where you have. But pay attention to what I'm telling you. Don't you know this Love Jones? Black folks do that today do not look like black folks in the 90s. I feel like the girls I see at the club now, I feel like my mama and aunties was was killing y'all hoes. Like you 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 compare it to like hold on, I'm a, I'm a, like I just you don't see that. Wait, wait, let me go back before they start hacking. Or right when they start hacking. Uh, let's see, let's see. I like to. You gotta like psych yourself out. Yeah. It's all in your head. 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 Look how slim they are. You know what's crazy though? You want to hear something crazy? When I had went to Jamaica, I lost seven pounds. I lost seven pounds and I was on there with five days, six days. Shit was wild. Black folk don't look good like this no more. It's got to be the hormones. Anyway, uh, okay. So wait, she finna break down her, I think, numerology? Let me see, I wanna see this part. Okay. No. Change. According to astrology and numerology, I'm all about change. In numerology, 
every number is broken down to a single digit number. When you get to 10, you start adding the numbers together. So, mm. Okay. So one plus zero equals one. 11 equals two. I was born on the 27th, it equals nine. Nine is the highest level of change. It's like the highest number next to God, according to that system. Oh, I'm a life path nine too. I mean, I am, you know, damn near perfect. So all right, all right. So that's enough of that. That's enough of that. How you gonna work and you clean it and detox and how can we do it? <laughs> and you got a good point. <laughs> Do y'all think she knew she was going to die? Hold on. Let me play this. Because I feel like when she was in that car, she just kind of knew. I feel like sometimes when people finna go, they just kind of know. How are you doing, sis? Oh, man, I'm good. We're going to go to Sambo Creek and get some shots. Just get oh. footage of the whole, the vibe. You know what I mean? Look how she looks. She looks like she's out of it. She said she had a bad spirit following her. I think she had really felt bad that they had ran over and killed that kid. Even though it was an accident. She's not even there. Like, she's there. But she's not even there. April 25th, 2000. Wow, three days from my birthday. Okay. She knew. She knew. She knew. I kind of believe, too, that, like, something took over her. You understand what I'm saying? I feel like something, like, because she's there, and we all kind of, like, zone out. We all kind of do that, but it was like something else was with her. Now, this is what I'm wondering, too. So her going back and forth, to basically cleanse herself was that her spirit trying to get cleansed before she crossed over just like uh i was gonna say usher uh kobe before he died he stopped at the catholic church and got prayed over but then i'd be kind of getting confused because like oh shit see i would need somebody spiritual break this now because then is a person's destiny already like it just it is what it is or is there something she could have done like i don't know like but i guess if she had hadn't went back that last time i guess she still would have died another way eventually i don't know was it just meant was you, you know what i mean like that was a different kind of zone out right but remember with aliyah right hold on somebody said aliyah Remember with Aaliyah, she had anxiety about getting on a plane. That's what people don't realize. Like, when you feel anxiety about something, that that's, a lot of times, that's the spirit trying to warn you. Saying, bitch, don't get on that plane, ho. Go lay down, ho. You know what I'm saying? But we're taught to ignore that shit. We're taught to not even be present with our body. Oh, you've got anxiety. Take a pill. Do I have anxiety or am I just very fucking aware? Am I anxious or is you an evil, nasty ass, dirty ass, good ass bitch? And every time I'm around you, my spirit don't like your spirit hole because you, you, you negative bitch. Like, which is it? You know what I'm saying? Women's intuition, right? I'm just saying 
You know, if every time you're around somebody, you can't get comfortable, you're not nervous. That's that they bad luck. That's your body saying, run, bitch. Huh. Look what just came up as we said. <laughs> Is that confirmation? Okay. All right. Listen, it's your superpower. Remember Love Jones? We was uh uh I was gonna throw that what was it Halloween party? Do you know the spirit something said don't don't throw that party? Don't go to New Orleans this month. Like some told me not to go. And I hit you up. I said, We, we ain't doing it. You said you don't like people. I said, I don't give a fuck. You know what I learned in life? After hearing a lot of these stories, you got to be okay with disappointing somebody. A lot of people didn't die just because they didn't want to disappoint somebody. Let a motherfucker be mad at you. Let a motherfucker be mad at you. You'll get over it. I'm just saying. Okay, okay, you said 25th is a sacrificial day. Okay, so here's my thing. Here's my thing. Here's my thing, right? Here's my thing. So when it comes to these people that are dying on certain days within the industry, it, it just has to be spiritual then. So basically, a lot of these people are under spiritual curses of some sort, or they've made some sort of deal with a certain entity, like something, you know what I mean? Because what, what's the chance that you just so happen to die at this age or on this date or at this time? Like, this shit is spiritual. Yes, I was just about to go somewhere and knew I shouldn't, and you definitely told me, no. oh, right. <laughs> I'm just saying. Storm, are you super? I don't. I, I don't even. I don't know, Jody. I really don't. I just understand everything is spiritual. Everything is like nothing's a coincidence. Uh. Okay. See, I said go to the Sloan Bella video. Wait a minute, Sloan Bella. Uh, Lisa left eye. Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. Oh, this one is on the same. Wait a minute, Madam Butter uh, Madam T Butterfly said, Storm, remember when the deceased boy's mother gave Lisa his shoes? Yes, I remember that. And remember the little boy that 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 I keep saying that they killed, but it was an accident. They ran him over on accident. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. His last name was Lopez, too. It was just with a Z. So the little boy's name was Lopez. He died by car. The mama gave Lisa the shoes. And they wore the same size. Lisa said that was her omen. She knew she was going to die. So let me ask you, if that was, a, so then, so it was just, so basically when it's your time, it's just your time. That was her warning. She was next. Because you know, like when we as people, when we have like close calls, then you start to think like, well, did I avoid it? Or was it just not my time? I don't know. Yeah, we're going to bring Call Me Kenfo back. His, his channel at 100K finally, too. Singer of the girl group TLC. And I'm talking about Lisa Left Eye Lopez. Now, she was a Gemini with a Cancer Moon and a Leo Rising. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. She was what? Yeah, the parents might have cursed her, too. That's very true. The mother might have definitely put a spirit in it and gave it right to her. Yep. She was a Gemini with a cancer moon 
and a Leo rising? Oh my God. Hell no. I ain't had no cancer. That means she's a talker. <laughs> she got a split personality. She's a talker. She's super, Gemini's a super smart. They're super, super sharp. So she's super sharp and intuitive. Then she's sensitive and emotional. And being with a fucking Leo is like committing suicide. So what is we talking about? We all know that a Leo will make you feel like you've been dragged to hell. So basically, you telling me Lisa left I was a sensitive gangster who could talk her ass off. If I talk to her family, that's probably how they would have. She's a sensitive. She was a sensitive gangster who would talk her ass off. She was probably somebody that would talk to you all night till the fucking sun came up. You ain't making a Leo do shit. The Leo will ruin your life. That cancer gonna have your ass crying. That girl's a goddamn sensitive gangster. Okay, I bet she on the other side still talking. I ain't gonna lie though, and and this is no no tea no shade. <laughs> if you if if you gotta go to a if you if you gotta go set up a fade, bitch, bring a Leo. I ain't even gonna hold you. They gonna be more excited to fight than you. Why the camera don't want to stay? Up? The camera was who moved the camera? If you're going to fight, bitch, bring a Leo. <laughs> they wake up ready to thug out. <laughs> bring a Leo. How about this? Don't tell a Leo you hate anybody because now they hate him. Like it just and they don't let shit go. I'm just like. I know a Leo, and I'm just like, um, I need to elaborate on Leos. Child, I, child, I would never. Ain't no getting over on y'all. I don't even think y'all meant to be in a relationship. Just stay by yourself and run through holes. Being with a Leo is like committing suicide. They are going to put you through it. And there is nothing you can do about it unless you're another fucking Leo. I am so sorry. Oh, air is all oh, shit. A Leo and Eric, baby. Now you, baby. Now you talking about World War Three? Anyway, moving right along. Moving right along. I thought I'd get that out of the way, <laughs> front and center, to tell you her energy. And I think it's the Leo rising that we saw out there on stage. She was pretty dramatic and pretty up in your face. Now, her energy right now is coming through in a very strong and communicative way. This girl wants to communicate. Nothing about her wanted to be silenced. She is saying that. So even when you are watching. What I just say. And we're going to put the speed on, I guess, 1.5. Okay, let's see. Watching videos on her and you're watching stories that people talk about knowing her. She's saying they're silencing the essence of who she was. Now, she wants me to go all the way back to childhood. So I'm going to go back to her childhood because that's where it all starts for everybody. It starts in childhood. So Lisa was a girl that grew up and she's showing me her environment. And it was it was dual. It was very, very rigid. And she's assessing this to her father. OK, it was military and it was rigid. And this was her father. And then the other side of it was creative and flowing and open. And she's actually associating that with both parents. Um, her mother was whimsical, although squashed. And the father was creative, although in the mindset of trying to control and be in power, which is a military thing. So she's kind of talking about that. She's enjoying the fact that she had the ability to do what she was going to do. But here's the interesting thing. She is basically making me feel that her childhood and where she was trying to go was she was trying to get the fame and the popularity she thought through her music and through singing. Okay. This is what she thought she was going to do this. It's almost like she felt like she was bullied into doing it because there was such a strong urge for her to do it, that she's not even sure that this was her urge to do it. She was just kind of reacting. You know, if somebody pushes your buttons over here and you react over here, she had that kind of volatile temper. Okay. So the cancer moon in her was very 
a kind of push pull energy. So she would go inward and go silent. And then the Leo rising would come out and the Gemini would talk your ears off. So she had that kind of energy, but she is saying like, she so much wanted to do it that she's not sure if it was actually what she wanted to do or what she, and she uses the word bully in childhood. It's like she was pushed or bullied into certain things she was very reactionary. She's talking about being reactionary with everything in her life. So she was an easy target is what she's saying, even as a child, because she was open on an emotional level. She was expressive and she was creative, but she was reactionary. So if you said something over here that was maybe not nice or distant from her or something that she didn't like, she reacted without thought. And that is something she wished she hadn't done. Like that's what she's saying. I always reacted. So she reacted throughout her life, which is interesting because usually a Gemini person will respond with some kind of conversation and intellect and well you know it happened like this or it happened like that that's how a gemini responds to things but she actually reacted to things so she actually reacted to her environment so if you made a loud noise she would respond immediately without even giving it any thought she just reacted that's how she was she was like a live wire okay that's how she describes herself like a wire and she was just really just responding to her environment she didn't understand all the time that her environment was maybe not in her best interest. So she was constantly battling, constantly fighting, constantly trying to fight her way through life, which is not the way that you're supposed to live. This is kind of what she's saying to me. Now she goes to her father with that and she fought a lot with him, although they were very similar is what she's saying. She's also like her mother, her her style and persona and you know the way that she held herself was very much like the maternal side of her family. And Actually, her musical and creative side, as far as musically, was very much like her father's side of the family. And the look, weirdly, was also like her father's side of the family. That's what she's saying. I kind of look like that. So Lisa had this really um, explosive, reactionary personality when she was dealing with people. And she goes to her father, and they battled. She's showing me, like, like headbutting, battling, headbutting. She probably really meant well, though. You know the crazy thing? This is what's crazy. This was crazy. People that are very reactionary towards you probably actually really care. <laughs> I always wonder, like, you know how people be like, I want some pizzazz. I don't say this shit. Like, give me the boring. They be like, I want some pizzazz. I want some, you know, like all that feisty, fiery shit. That probably was turning them niggas on. Because I'm going to look at you like, you done? <laughs> Is you finished or you done? But people don't like cold, so I get it. Let me ask you, would y'all rather be with somebody that was too cold or too hot? Because I'm going to give you nothing. But then some niggas are pour out their heart. I mean, I see one nigga I mean, just, just professing his love and bust out in tears and professing his love and I was looking like this is probably that thing called passion. Women be, you know what I'm saying? Be looking for. Because I remember I was looking like, are you okay? I don't have that at all. Wow. Re I'm really deficient. That's okay. Everybody's different. <clears throat> Everybody different. I'm just saying. Neither. No, you got to pick when I said pick. Now, let me act like all them other niggas and, and talk about a hypothetical. On my podcast, these hoes be having the whole fake ass scenario out, fighting in the fucking uh, 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 back of the fucking Chinaman shop. I asked you if you want relatively balanced. I said, do you want too cold or too hot? Mm, I hate nonchalant. Oh, I'm real. <laughs> I'm real nonchalant. Like, oh, you all right. Too cold. Cold is boring. Lukewarm. My aunt told me he used to love it when I go. Yeah. I was looking at that like. Because he was professing his love with his whole chest. And I just have never in my life. I've always just been like, you all right? Is something wrong with me? Do I need to go back to therapy?
Cause I like I even noticed like we gonna we gonna play the thing, baby. I noticed even like when I used to work with kids, you know, when I would cuss their ass out, they would just be attached to me. And I'm just like, so I gotta cuss you out to get you to act right? I just never understood that. I miss Storm who used to hand out those good. You like Storm cussing folks out. No, I listen, I'm an angel. I'm damn near perfect. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. But then Lil Jones be like, nigga, you ain't all that reserved how you be acting. Look at you with all them fucking tattoos. Look at you going to them or just doing all this freaky nasty shit. Your ass ain't all that like you be trying to act. So she say no. Lil Jones say I'm the toxic one. Allegedly. I know that emotion makes me uncomfortable too. I was like, why are you crying? Like, are you okay? Like, nobody died. It's okay. Or I'm always telling people, you just get another. You got every suit. Why y'all keep saying that? Y'all keep saying that. They say, you want some from the store? That is me. <laughs> you want something to eat? <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, that's bad. That is me. You want you want something to eat? <laughs> uh. She's showing me that, and she's feeling like she didn't need to do it, but it was something that her father needed her to do. Um, it's almost as if she was pushed out there to to so the father could live vicariously through her without saying that. So she was kind of maneuvered in that position. She knew she was going to step into that light. There was no doubt about it. She was like, this is what I'm going to do. The, the issue that she's kind of describing to me, though, is would she have stayed in that line of work? And the answer is no. I know that sounds really weird because you're thinking she was on her way to make another album. She was going to do this. But no, her, her life was so much more expansive in her mind. And she had so many other avenues with which to move through that music in the way that she was doing it. She was very unhappy with the way that they were marketed, not at first because she wanted to be out there. So when she met up with TLC and she was able to be in the band with them and be able to- Do you know when she talked about the, hold on, let me see, most replay. Let me go to this section. Else is going on behind the scenes, but she wanted to be good again is what she's saying. She wanted to be whole and good. So there's a very contemplative side. She is whole and good right now. Actually, she fought her way out of it. And her death is very- um, her death is karmically, uh, <clears throat> it was to remove her in a karmic way before more happened to take her away from who she was. So the death in and of itself was a good thing, even though she died. So for her, it took her soul back to where it started, back to the beginning, back to the essence of who she was. She could not be who she was here. She was controlled by everybody. She was controlled by men. She's saying she was somewhat mm -hmm. of a love addict because she needed a man's approval. Mm -hmm. And if you know what that's like, when you're trying to get the approval of somebody that won't give it to you, this was the boyfriend's problem. He would not give it to her. So she, and basically was saying, you know, you're not enough because I'm over here doing this. So she set fire to the shoot. <laughs> she set fire. I'm sorry. When I was her age, I probably would have done the same thing. I would hope I wouldn't burn down the whole house though, because that's a huge. Yeah, this is uh, Sloan Bella on YouTube. Y'all can follow her. She's super dope. Um, but I think y'all can see that shit. I keep again. I gotta go between fucking screens. Oh yeah, 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 you can see it right there. Ask Bill. You have to pay for when you set fire in it. It accidentally causes a house fire that burns everything down. Especially when you know you're an NFL player and you've got like big bucks and it's a big house. She's kind of laughing at that, but she's also shaking her head. Like this was not who she was, but she was extremely reactionary at the time. So those reactions were based on people controlling her and trying to manipulate her is what she's saying. She was breaking free of this. This is why she was going to Honduras. She felt a real pull to do that. She wanted to do good. This is what she's saying. Do good for all the bad that she'd done. Okay. And to help people. And she wanted to see the world differently. It's not that she didn't want to write music. She wanted to write the music the way that she wanted to write it. It's, it has nothing to do with, she didn't want to write music because she did. But what happened to her is as she started to buck the system and keep in mind like she shows me boxing shit okay this girl had the energy of like a male boxer like she would just she was gonna fight you and she was always on the fight is what she's saying she was always fighting somebody always fighting to be seen always fighting to be heard saying it's such a waste of time and it's not the way it has to be but she was raised in a family that kind of encouraged that behavior 
most likely to control her, most likely to withhold love and attention, but yet give her love and attention in order to maneuver her in a certain way. So that's that's so sad. So basically, she fought all her life and was just never able to be hurt herself, relaxed. That's so, that's so, wow. I guess we all have to have that little time where we like, you know. Mm, wow. That's why she's talking about the bullying. When she ended up in Honduras at that point, she actually recognized that her body energy was open to both positive and negative. So she had um, what she felt was demonic possession or entities. I, it sounds so weird. I don't think she's thinking of it like, you know, little like the exorcist. That's not what I'm getting. She felt that something was in control of her responses and that it wasn't her. I can see her. What she's showing me is those little Russian dolls. You know, the Russian dolls that you get. And there's like one Russian doll and two Russian doll, and three Russian doll. And you pull them apart until you get to the tiny little Russian doll in the middle. So there's like a big one and it could go on for, I don't know what they call them. They have a specific name. It's a cultural thing for them, but those little dolls. And then it went right down to her little inner self there. And she was trying to make that big. She was trying to come out. She was trying to align herself with the energy. This is what she's showing me. Like she's trying to get big and she's trying to understand what's going on. So there was psychological damage to her, spiritual damage to her. Mm. And she was actually in Honduras to correct spiritually what she felt she had done wrong. So this spiritual pursuit for her was very much based on what she could do to help other people. But she was very aware that they were coming for her. So interesting. She did something. Now I'm getting this. She did something at the time that she went to Honduras, which she totally slammed the door on Hollywood or the entertainment industry or however you want to word that, the music industry. Slammed that door shut and said, absolutely no way. I am not doing that. Shut it down. No talking. No, 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 is what she's saying. Just absolutely no. And went about her business. She really wanted to do something different. This is what so what do y'all think that was? What do y'all think that was? And she said, absolutely not. No, no, no to. What do y'all think that was? she's saying okay so she did not want to be part of that group whatever that group is she wanted nothing to do with it so um part of her personality was uh part of her personality was like i have the right to change and i can be what i want to be and i can be seen and you don't own me so it was very free-spirited she had this free-spirited she would have been fine to just live her life in a different way she wanted to create but she wanted to create differently and they weren't going to let her so she shut them down and she walked out of something which pissed everybody off, okay? So she pissed people off by walking out of a certain circumstance. And this was part of the problem. So when I'm getting um, when I'm getting the energy of Lisa, what I'm getting is there was this actual wall that went down and she's like, I'm not gonna entertain that anymore. I'm not gonna, I don't care if you have a contract, come find me. She knew they were looking for her, okay? That's what she's saying. I don't know who the they is. I don't know if she means the record company. I don't know if she means her manager. I don't know if she means the other two members of her band. I don't know who she means, but she was very aware of it. And then she says, okay, like, and again, I, the impressions are being put into my head, but she's actually quite talkative. Like she's talkative. I'm hearing wording. She's showing me that her eyes were shut and she wore blinders. Okay. Not just condoms, but blinders. Keep in mind, she wants to point that out. Left eye, left eye covered. Y'all know what that means. She's pointing that out. That mm. happened three years into her working with TLC or going up on the road. Maybe she was with another band over here. And the third year into her professional music career, which I'm seeing started like pretty young as a teenager, the third year into it where she was known in bands for singing, out came the left eye. Ah, out came the left eye third year. The secret society. Yeah, the one I must, I'm not, but the one I, it's Masonic symbolism. That's why you see the celebrities, they do this, you see them do that, you see them shh, like that, saying keep it a secret, the secret blood oaths. Yeah, some of them even have uh, the SHH tattooed on their finger. I think Lizzie Lohan had that tattoo, Rihanna had that tattoo. All that shit means something. They all do the same poses for a reason, or they all do the poses where like you see them looking into a mirror or like they're like you see their face and they're holding like a mask of their like it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. 
Okay. So when you see that, that was what she was running away from. That's what she was trying to atone for. That's what she was changing in her life. She was changing that expression. So she was moving in a different direction. Okay. And they did not want her doing that. They really didn't want her doing it. So part of her was like, my eyes were closed and then they were open. And then I went to Honduras. So she went to Honduras actually to ask for help to raise her soul so that she wouldn't be caught in that negative karma she felt and that's what she was trying to do she was desperately trying to do it at the you didn't want to be stuck in the lower uh the lower dimensions the same or what some may refer to as hell okay time she was trying to cure her physical body that's all i'm getting i don't know what was wrong with it she's awfully cute she had cute figures it wasn't a weight thing but she was actually trying to clear her physical body so that she could see i wanted to see so i'm taking this to be a psychic thing i think she was pretty psychic actually honestly but she was working on her body she was working on her spirit she was working on meditation and she really wanted to see so she wanted to be able to be open and in control of what she could see on the other side that's why she went to honduras um <clears throat> I believe this is around the time that she met Dr. Sebi. Sebi, I hope I'm saying that right. I believe this is around the time. She's kind of nodding her head, yes. And he was there to help her with the health part of her physicality. He was also teaching her to be strong in her approach on life. He was warning her that she needed to get ready for battle. It's such a weird thing because she's just a little girl and she's a musician. She needed to get ready for battle. And I'm taking this to be a spiritual battle for her, okay? So... Um, a, you know, a dark night of the soul kind of thing. That's how it's being described because when she shuts down and goes into the dark, she really is closed down. And she was saying she was having episodes like this, like where she wasn't able to see and then she was able to see. So a lot of this was happening. Now, I immediately see her head twist around and look behind her, constantly looking behind her. Mm. Can't see anything behind her because it's on the astral level or in, in the spirit world, if I put it. I always say astral, but in the spirit world, she couldn't see what was behind her, but she could feel them, okay? She Damn. Damn, she was running from that shit, but she couldn't. Yikes. She could feel them. And when that car accident happened with that little boy that she hit, which I think had the same last name as her, about a month before she actually got in a car accident and died, they were actually coming for her is what she's saying. Something with the energy focused in the wrong way. It was what she's showing me is like a like a like a electrical storm and the lightning flashes over here but it gets something over there and then we have to focus over there and then it comes back over here like a boomerang that's what she's saying happened she knew she was in the process and she knew she was going to be taken out now i'm taking this to be on a spiritual way i'm not saying anybody assassinated her i mean this spiritually she knew she was going to be taken out because she was like looking behind herself all the time like who is behind me she could feel them they were following her and they didn't want her to go she was not living up to her end of the bargain and i actually get that so her death mm. was actually her freedom I want you to hear me when I'm saying that she did not go into um, the astral level the way that some people do when they've done not good things on earth where they are surrounded by what they think they're surrounded by, but it's really nothing. She actually went into, um, I see her cross right over. Okay. So what she did very, this is how she's showing me her death. So the car accident happened. She knew it was going to happen when the little boy died and she knew that they were coming for her and she couldn't understand that actually really flipped her mind out why he had to die. And she just didn't die. That actually freaked her out. She did not want that on her soul. That was not something she agreed to. It absolutely wasn't. So this was not a soul contract deal with that. She was walking away from that. So she realized, do you know how strong this girl had to be? So you sell yourself or you sell yourself out for music, for fame, for everything. And then you go, wait a second, I don't want to do that. That's not who I am as a soul. So I reject that and I'm going back to who I am. So I'm basically going to become the spirit being that I am and I'm a good girl. That's what she's saying. So when this happened, this actually broke her in half. Like she knew they were coming for, but she knew it before because she's looking around her. So she's meditating and she's trying to be peaceful, but she keeps feeling it. She feels like they're following her. I'm going to use the word shadow people with this because I'm seeing like a group of people following her and she does not know who they are, why they're there, what they're doing but she feels them. Okay. So she's very intuitive. She's very psychic. And I take it to be one of two ways as she's moving through her energy, she's showing me her death. And as that car accident happened, I believe it rolled. And I don't think she had her seatbelt on. I have to research that actually, I recall it, but she, and some people are sucked out through the back. Okay. Through the spine, through the, through the root chakra, but backwards, she was literally pushed out of her body pushed forward. So she came out through the solar plexus. This is what she's going, boom, right out front. Almost like there was something literally pushing her out of this world and into the other side. I actually feel her death was um, divine intervention for what was going to happen to her soul if she stayed here. Wow. That's an odd twist on it, but that's how I feel. I feel that this girl wanted so badly and was praying so hard 
so that she could be who she was again and not who they said she was, that this literally shoved her right out of her body, put her in on the other side, but shoved her forward so that she could avoid what was going to happen to her and all of the chaos, like a fire around her. So I feel like this was a good thing for her. She was not happy she was dead. It was actually quite a shock for her. She so basically, blood in, blood out is what they're describing. Blood in, blood out. Now, blood into the industry, if I'm if I'm really looking at it, like let's look at somebody like, excuse me, like Coy LeRae, right? Her daddy was in the industry. So she technically already has blood in the industry. But for people that are not related to anybody in the industry, I guess you have to make some kind of sacrifice, blood to be shed off somebody in your family, whatever, whatever. You know, these motherfuckers, their family members be dropping like flies to get to a certain part or certain point. And then that person has to die to get out blood in, blood in, blood out. Right? Mm. What's so interesting too, I remember uh, Dr. Linda even told me, she was like, <clears throat> she was like, you're going to go far, but at certain doors, you're not going to want to go in. Like you're going to go far in this business, but in order to go to certain levels, you're going to have to do X, Y, Z, and you're not going to do that. But you won't be without money. And I'm like, but that's what, okay, well, I always have, so I'm good. So, but it was so interesting even for a metaphysician to be like uh you don't want to do that <laughs> don't touch that <laughs> leave that alone you know like i'll be fine i'll have a career it's just certain but you know what i don't even have the the desire don't think like that no 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 i understood what she was telling me i'm going to go far i'm i mean i'm gonna be independent but in order to get in certain rooms, you got to be down with the get down. And I'm just not down with that. I'm just not. I'm just not. She was really not happy. And the first thing that I see when she stepped out of her body is I see that little boy holding her hand immediately was the person who crossed her over. I see, um, I see tears with her. I can feel them because she did not know what happened to him. And she was so afraid that something negative happened to him and that he was in a bad place because that's what the, I'll call them the shadow people. I don't even know what you call them. The dark entity behind her that, but there was a group of them. There's like more than six of them. I can feel the tears in her heart, like trying to figure out what happened to him. And he crossed her over. So he crossed her over. It made her heart happy that when she crossed right out of her body, she was basically pushed into the little boy's path. He's the one that crossed her over. That's what she's saying. So she was able to see what happened to him and how his life was now, which it's weird to call it his life because in a certain way, when we leave the physical body, we think a lot of us that that's the end of our life when it's really a transition. Okay. It's a transition. She's showing me that they walked hand in hand for some time and she was able to correct. She's talking about the, that when she was speaking, when she's speaking, it's a telepathy that she's talking about. She was able to correct and to speak and to say what she couldn't say. Actually quite a lucky death in a way that she was able to clear that karma, but she felt them coming for her. And when they took that little boy out, when that happened right in front of her, I think it was probably only two weeks before she passed, that, that absolutely made her know that she was that that was happening to her. And for some reason, the energy reverberated off to the side and then back to her. Now on the other side, she's also talking about Dr. Sebi, which is funny, he's not around. I'm laughing because she's making me laugh with it. She's saying that he was so much on the right track when he was talking to her. He used to talk to her and she used to sit down. She's showing me how they're sitting in a, like a squatted position. So like a tribal position, okay? Out in the middle of the forest and they're sitting um, kind of just like how you squat down and you sit on your ankles. This is so good, golly. She's showing me this and she's showing me them eating something that you have to peel. I think it's some kind of a fruit and they're talking. They're talking like this. They're facing each other and they're having these long heart to heart talks, father-like and spiritual-like. So, so spiritual father for her. This is how she's describing him. She did say that she would fight him at times 
partially would. She did say she would fight him at times. There was an element to her personality that would question everything he said, but she said that her body became strong. So she became strong through him and she got her second sight. So she's talking psychic sight and mediumship. She was talking everything. She felt that the, the, I guess you want to say demons. That's what she's kind of saying, but I'm going to call them shadow people because I can't see their faces and I don't know what they are. Usually I can tell what something is. I can't really tell what these are because they're kind of cloaked. So she's saying that these things, okay, I'm going to use the word things. She feels that were demons. We're following her and trying to corrupt her up until the point of her death. She All right. So we leave that there. For the rest of that, you can go to Sloan Bella's YouTube page. And I mean, she does readings on, I mean, Selena, Easy e like she be on point. Yeah, I definitely need to go watch her uh, her video on Kim Porter. It was really good. Really good. I wonder if Beyonce... <laughs> now I'm talking about Beyonce. I wonder if Beyonce wants to just escape. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when you look at Beyonce, like, there's a sadness be behind her eyes. Like, you know what I mean? Then you be looking like, damn, you... You putting out another album? You doing another tour? You be like, you ain't tired? I promise you, these motherfuckers is like, they slaves. Madonna still touring? Bitch, you ain't tired? Go sit down. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Almost think she can't stop. Beyonce doesn't know anything else. So that's true. But that's also kind of sad. Like, let me tell y'all something. I love y'all. Woo, woo, woo. I love y'all. But, bitch, I'm doing this to make a certain amount of money. Then I'm retiring. I'm going to go sit down. I dream of the day when I have no labor. Like, Labor is not fun. Maybe I'm just a lazy nigga, but labor's not fun. Like, what's the point of having all that money and you can't ever enjoy it? That's a good point, too. That's true, too. Like, a certain amount of money, then just go sit, shit, live your life, travel. Have leisure. I don't know. I don't know. Unless these motherfuckers be broke. You know what I mean? Because they got a lot of bills. They have a lot of responsibilities. You know, business deals can fall through. Tours can fall through. Unless a lot of these motherfuckers really be broke. And they like, bitch, I got to work. That doesn't work for coach since they retired. It okay, fair enough. Maybe I got it wrong. I mean, I can see myself doing charity work of some sort, but I want to be at the point where, like, I work when I feel like it. Like, somebody call me, darling. I'm in Paris. So, darling, I'm going to Thailand next week. Like, I don't want to still be. I'm finna get on YouTube and upload a video. Like, I. You know what I mean? Like, all them Virgos never satisfied. Shit, I would hate to be you. God bless you. Y'all truly perfectionists. I'm not. <laughs> huh. Get to a point. Go sit down. Right now, was Las Vegas or overseas to make money? That's very true. That's a good point. Yes, freedom should be. Listen, I, I got it. Can you see it on my wrist? I got a tattoo right here. Now, funny story, but now we just talking. If y'all want to leave, you can leave now. But funny. Wait, wait. Can you see it? Wait, 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 maybe not. There you go. Well, black power. But when I got this freedom tattoo, I remember I got it and I said, OK, in six months. No, or a year. I said six months. I said, yeah, I said in six months, I will not be working for anybody. And the shit happens. So be careful what you prophesy over your life. The shit come true. I think it took me a little longer, though. I think it was like 11 months or a year, but it happened. 
Um, a lot of these people, uh, good point. Virgos are needy and need a lot of attention. It's no sitting down. Damn. Down, down, down. Uh, let's see. Child, let me go chance some. I'm just saying. I think Blue Ivy's low key jealous of her daughter. You never know. Did I slander her or did Suge Knight slander her? And we just review what Suge Knight said. Just your opinion and your point of view. Your, your point of view. We're reviewing what that nigga said. Sloan Bella is a Leo. And guess what? And she'll even tell you. She's single. She, she I'm telling you, Leo. I'm telling you. Leo, Leo's, they fun though. They fun. I, I, I will say that. Beyonce to me goes on tours as a distraction from her real life. I can believe that. Blue did not get look, 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 look. Speaking of Beyonce not giving birth to Blue Ivy, they say Solange did. That's the rumors. They say Solange actually had Blue. Allegedly. They say Solange had Blue. Now, Beyonce had the others. Because if you remember, Beyonce had a miscarriage before Blue. And I think they was going to name the first baby Brooklyn, if I remember correctly. But she miscarried. And then Blue came along. But, but what if? What if? Solange really carried Blue. Oh, my God. What if that would Come to the camera. What if? What if? Blue is actually Solange's child. What if? Oh my God! Like I mean, that's true. Now that's that's truly Jay Z nut. We know that that's his nut. But what if Blue is actually Solange's daughter, oh. and she's still gonna kind of look like Beyonce anyway because they all family. Oh. Oh my God! What if I love celebrity? I'm finna be like, what was that one? Um, uh, what was that one gay YouTuber? He was gay as hell. Just gay, gay, gay. Shane Dawson. Remember when Shane Dawson used to do celebrity conspiracies? Bitch, we might, we might bring that back. We might bring that back. What if? What if? And then you know she had to have, you know, the fake belly. Remember that belly was folded. Oh, my God. Terry Ellis 38 said, hey, Storm, on Angel Kisses Oracle last night, she brought up that you missed a good, you missed a good hint by Jack. It's very good pertaining to Beyonce and Jack. Oh, I have to go back and look. Um, Beyonce didn't give the girls Chloe, and because she wanted to give her aunt, oh, ooh, 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 ooh. wait, let's look at the fake belly. Oh my god, wait a minute! <laughs> oh my god, I love celebrity conspiracies. Y'all don't even understand. Wait, 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 wait. The world went nuts this week after our interview with Beyonce last Sunday led to fevered speculation about her baby bump and whether she was faking her pregnancy. At Sunday night, it consumed us day and night. So we went back and analysed the tapes, every shot, every angle, frame by frame, to bring you the truth, the whole truth about Bumgate. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. 
But what this moment exposed to some even caught us by surprise. Here it is again, uh -oh. slowed down. As Beyonce sits down with Molly Mel Oh! Oh! Do a belly do that? Do a pregnancy belly do that? Oh, shit. Ladies, y'all up in here then and let a nigga skeet in you and had his child. Did your belly do that? Now, I actually felt uh, my ex-best friend, uh, shout out to her, by the way. Let me tell you something. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. I don't need, I don't, it's it's all good. I wish you the best, you and, and little L'Oreal. I wish y'all the best. I, I really do. But anyway, I remember when I, she was pregnant and I felt her stomach. I had never felt a pregnant belly before. And that shit was so hard. Like, I was like, why is it so hard? Like, it, you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, wow. I was so infatuated. Then I was just so infatuated with the fact that she was pregnant. You know, I had a little infatuation with pregnant women. It's a, it's a whole other thing. Anyway, my point is, they say they got good coochie too, but but that <laughs> they say the coochie real good when they pregnant. But I just feel like, you a wild nigga to fuck a pregnant lady if it's not your baby mom. But anyway, anyway. Um... But y'all, did y'all barely do that? Wow. Meldrum, her dress folds. That crease caused a worldwide controversy. <laughs> Some are wondering if Beyonce is fake. Okay, not, not rumor has it though. Okay, wait, wait, let's go back. Let's go back. We went through the unseen footage, frame by frame. I cannot miss it. Before the interview, Beyonce is fitted with a microphone. And then, from another angle, as she goes to her seat, a makeup artist. She ain't even her. really. But then there's this angle from the side. As Beyonce sits down, there's no sign of any straps that could hold padding in place. But for us, the biggest clue that she is expecting is this. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. I got a shock as much as anyone else. Uh, and you're glowing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's a mother's joy yeah, you just can't fake. Be honest, if it's any time, right now is the time. And I'm so happy. Well, and you. I feel... <laughs> all right. Listen. Her having a glow, baby. That could be Tana. That could be the makeup. But I don't know what y'all think. That shit did go wrong. It folded like Roly folded Camilla. Just saying. And even when she walked, I felt like she tried to put a fake waddle. You know what I mean? I felt like she tried to give us a fake, like, you know, you know how them pretty women be waddling like that and shit. Instead of just walking normally. You know, just felt like she tried to put a put a fake waddle on it. That's just what I feel. I felt like there was a fake waddle. You wouldn't need that big to be waddling like that. I hate it won't let me go up. That's okay. I'm just saying. You think it was a real bump? Love Jones said she might have had extra padding like extra padding for protection, maybe. Allegedly, allegedly, not do it again. Why y'all? <laughs> listen, listen, y'all. I leave my waddle in the law. <laughs> oh my god. Mm mm mm. Do, not do it again. Y'all so nasty. Y'all, y'all so nasty. What you been sipping on? Why y'all always think I'm drunk? I am not drunk. This is a uh, watermelon mango. I'm, I'm high on life. I got amino acids. I got uh, food enzymes. I got a uh, slippery elm, you know, so I can shit. I got a uh, uh, vitamin C, like what you mean? 
Hey, I think I'm drunk because I'm entertaining y'all. <laughs> Her mother said she was clumsy. Mmm. Mmm. I ain't got no any. Listen, I have pretty much been sober. Speaking of that, before we go, because we'll be back later. I gotta call my auntie and help her with some. Don't y'all got them family members that's not like tech savvy, so they be needing you. Can you book this? <laughs> How you figure this out? <laughs> no shade. You gotta be listen, listen. You don't want to talk about my pay. I don't play. I don't pl- I don't play at all. I don't play no games. None. No, no, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. I got all those, these, these. These, I don't play no games. I don't play no games. Uh Uh-oh. Every vitamin, every enzyme, all that. Wait, 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 wait. I got, hold up. I ain't done. Then I got the ibuprofen. Then I got... (laughs) The stuff to keep the keep your gut and your microbiome and your gut together. This is a parasite cleanser, although I just finished 10 days on this. So uh now I can't take no more for another 20 days, but I just finished 10 days on this. Uh then I got uh 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 plenty of coconut oil uh for the body, and then then I got my lime flavored lime flavored sea moss. And bladder whack. I don't even know what bladder whack is, but there we go. So, you know, just saying. Yep, I got. Then I got olive leaf extract. I got lino oil. Uh, what else I got over there? Uh, other other stuff for your gut. Um. Bladder whack add inches to your pipe. Is that true? Listen, I just got this new thing. Wait a minute. We doing too much. I just got this new thing. It's called a um, hydro extreme. It's basically it's good like for your penis health. So listen, I got a, yeah, I got a whole pharmacy. I yep, I got green tea. I got uh green tea, black tea. I got ginger tea i got uh chamomile peppermint um so it's an orange type tea i got too i got an indian tea that you can only take 15 days at a time it'll knock out anything you got going on i told y'all i want to be a herbalist or maybe i go back to school and become a pharmacist i got everything in this mother If you <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do y'all do y'all want to see? Can I show a penis pump? On, can I show a penis pump on YouTube? I think I can. What did I do? Oh, I put it in a bathroom. Never mind. But yeah, it's good. It's it's uh wait, I can show you on wait, wait, wait. Let's go to Amazon and show you. Like, I am not playing really whatever. Bathmate, that's what this bathmate hydro. Okay, there we go. Okay, make sure when nothing nasty coming up. No, not I still we ain't, we ain't hollering at you, Mariah. Uh here we go. Share this tab. I'm so glad that was not porn. Um listen, I got my pump. I went out playing. I am not, I am not playing. It's for hell. I sure got my shit. <laughs> this this me stick gonna be working for a long time. Oh yes. Oh yes. Wait, no, no. This is this this is good. This is good. What is that for? Listen, <laughs> it's um. You know what? I shouldn't tell you. Should I tell you? You have a whole apothecary, apothecary 
shop in the house. Yes, I do. That's how I am. Is it going to make it bigger? Yes, but yes. So basically it, yeah, it's an old method for lengthening um, the phallus as well as expanding. So basically it just, what is really meant for is to make it thicker, harder, and stronger. So yeah. Show us the process. I cannot, I can show you on Twitter. I cannot show you on YouTube, but yeah, so pump to exp yeah, yeah. Old Asian, it, it ain't number old Asian uh methods, but you you're supposed to keep your your meat together and make sure everything flows correctly. That's why, you know, just saying. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. It can always be bigger, but it ain't even about that. I like to make sure that um, my erections are maximized because I can tell the difference sometimes when I'm, you know, when I'm really, really at like 90, 95, and if I'm at like 70. Yeah, but I have, I have the Hydro 7, so Hydro 7, I think the max that one goes to is nine inches, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yep. Got to help the prostate. You got to move the energy through. Yeah. 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 You got to move the energy through your body, through your sacral chakra. Listen, I've been doing the work. I've been doing energy work and spiritual work. Because I'm on everything. I don't want nothing clogged. I don't want, I want free, free loving, free flowing. Um, do you practice semen retention too? You, I guess I kind of have before. So it's like a prostate massage. No, I have something else for that. I have something else for that. But those, that, those are recommended too. And I was fighting that one. Like, I don't, uh, that one's that one's that one's tough for me, but it's necessary. Not all the time, but to clear the energy in that part of your body. I'm so glad I'm not a man. I uh, hand you meat. Oh, my meat is always in my hand. My meat has been in my hand pretty much since I was twelve, eleven. Absolutely not, Jody. We don't play that. Um, are you straight? Yes, allegedly. Um, let's see. Anything else before I go? Doing Kegels now? Yes, yes. Do your Kegels? Keep asking she <laughs> So you got your stroke number down pack? No. I don't really know what my stroke number is, to be honest, because, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, do you take anything for lucid dreaming? Mm-mm. But I noticed when I, I take that back, maybe I'm lying, I got, magnesium to sleep and this uh like it's some kind of tart cherry juice or whatever but when you really really relax you do dream very very well uh did you get all those from uh, -uh i just got the sea <sighs> moss from um from shinko and my uh lino oil no, no, no. So you got to take the tart cherry, add magnesium to it, and like some sparkling water. You'll be out like a light. Uh, let's see. Mm. 
Let's see. What's the best place to get CMOS? Shit, go to doshinko.com. Yep, magnesium and melatonin, yes. Yes, how is health awkward? How how health is not awkward? Health is not awkward. All right. Yeah, I do it too much of these comments. <laughs> um, it's 3 a.m. here and I have to go to work. What's a natural alternative to caffeine? Honey, pink Himalayan salt. I feel like I'm missing something else. Do you take honey, pink Himalayan salt, and lick it? I feel like I'm missing something. It'll get you right, though. All right. We out here, people. We'll be back a little later. Like, comment, subscribe, share if you care. And, uh, yeah. Peace. <laughs>